Uh, <coughs> let me give you the one that's on. Okay. Here, switch mics. Oh, yes. Well, my name is Wayne Hoffler, and uh, I'm uh, formerly with Boeing four months ago, unemployed at the moment, but I just thought uh, two days ago that uh, this might be a perfect venue to share my dream. <coughs> I had a, an, an idea, and I'd like to see it come to fruition. Yes, also my 27-year uh, career has been on the space shuttle program, some of the space station. Uh, unfortunately, I, I do not really, I'm not an insider. I don't really know what's going on exactly, so I'm sort of a somewhat knowledgeable, but somewhat naive uh, person of, of the, the development of future spacecraft. My idealistic vision, I'll have to grant you that it's a little bit idealistic, is a proposal for a future spacecraft. I know there are several barriers and objections to this, but it's still something, hopefully, <coughs> worthwhile. Uh, it's something that the mass, my master's degree in system engineering has taught me, if anything has taught me, is that uh, the keys of project success is an upfront design of an excellent architecture. That is, is, is very, very important. Um, it's important to spend time and money on to get you right. Unfortunately, the wrong way, unfortunately, too often you don't spend enough time and money on the overall architecture and uh, schedule pressures drive to develop as soon as possible. And the attitude is we can't afford to do it right. We've got to get it done. <coughs> One such architecture done right that I discovered is something called Boeing's Bold Stroke, which is a reusable open system aircraft avionics software architecture and a component library and a construction kit. In fact, my master's application, my master's paper was about that. The applicability of that for spacecraft, using for military aircraft. But uh, this Boeing's Bold Stroke is a reusable open system, right? It's developed as a common framework for a product line of avionics software or operational flight programs across multiple manned military fighter aircraft platforms. I was wondering how applicable might that be for space, possibly. The advantage there is that it's highly reusable and there's commonality across the projects and it proves that it's proven to be very cost effective. I think there are other advantages to having commonality. Of course, uh, another example would be the future combat system uh, and the uh, SOSCO, the system of systems common operating environment and the idea there is every single element within the uh, every single weapon system, every single vehicle, the idea there was to have some common core that would allow them to be more interoperable. Um, yes, a common operating system for interoperability. And what more would we, we want with a family of uh, space elements out there, <coughs> even though they're from different manufacturers, different, different contractors, even different nations perhaps, but uh, right. Unfortunately, warfare is a very different problem domain. There are commonalities, which we could take advantage of. Uh, space exploration, and that's what my paper sort of explored, is the commonalities between these two sort of domains. Uh, also, the idea is that uh, this, in, in, this, this uh, takes advantage of network-centric operations, or enables network-centric operations. And I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not, a custom trimmed Sasuke was used for or considered for space. Now, the proposal is to have a common architectural framework and a construction kit with pluggable components, also all software I'm talking about, for a product line of avionics software to go in every single space vehicle, every element, uh, uh, for a variety of future sp exploration, spacecraft, possibly based on small jokes, but I know there's intellectual property uh, issues there. Manned, unmanned, launchers, satellites, space bases, surface bases, surface rovers, robots, I know this is probably ideal, it's probably a lot too, rather too late for this idea to take fruition, but uh, and there are inevitable schedules of schedule and cost pressures, which leads to poorly designed architectures. I'm trying to say, let's get around that. Let's try not for that not to happen. Unfortunately, a number of craft elements are not quite at, at a critical mass for that to have much of a benefit, but uh, the rule of thumb is if you have three, that sharing a core software, you, you, you get the payback there. Uh, unfortunately, there's no central controlling organization except NASA, but that's, I don't know if we can say that anymore. And with commercial space, part, there's a lot more parties involved. There's only one hope, I would think, is some if enough stakeholders catch his vision and want the benefits, perhaps a new multi-party central authority or somehow, uh, or a service with representatives from all the stakeholders could come together for the common architecture uh, that we use uh, and allow for and enable multi interoperability on the spacecraft, and there's all kinds of benefits from that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, quick question. 
so it, it's a paper. I mean, this is a, a, a paper you've written up. Is this yes, e yes. It, it's well, it, it, it uh, the paper itself was specific to bold stroke and considered how, from what I could gather of bold stroke and study of bold stroke, how applicable that that architecture that was designed for the military aircraft could be applicable to civilian space exploration craft. And does it address like security concerns? No, unfortunately, not as much. Not as much. There's some of that, yes. But I think um, the melding of, say, bolt stroke and Sosco, Sosco would address that very well, I think. Uh, I, I think that would be a good approach. Thank you. Oh, and then you had 